Hi. So now we're gonna simplify our job on calculating limits. How? We're gonna introduce limit theorems. And look, let's just start with theorems involving just one function. Okay, so let's start with theorem number one. And this theorem, uh, uh, this theorem resorts to linear function Q equals A times V plus uh, B, where A and B, of course, are some constants. In this case, of course, limit of the function with V approaching N is equal to A times N plus B. And look, it's as simple as that. We get that when we have uh, when we have a linear function, all we've got to do in order to calculate a limit is to substitute uh, is to substitute appropriate value in which we want to evaluate the limit, and that's it. So look, if our function is q equals uh, q equals three v plus two and we want to evaluate limit with v approaching 1 uh, out of 3v plus 2 we're going to get that this is 3 times 2 plus 2 so 6 plus 2 which is 8 ok, and look, the next theorem we're going to put in is even simpler because actually it concerns a uh, part of the part of the linear function, and this is a theorem when q is equal to b, and b is a constant. So we've got a constant function. And look here again, it out without any calculation, we can figure out that if v if b is uh, if q is always equal to b then regardless of the value at which we want to uh, 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 of n at which we want to evaluate the limit the limit is always going to be the same so limit with v approaching n out of the constant of course is equal to this constant so it is just b okay so now we also good to do deal with something very simple basically for now we are just taking and uh, 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 taking and uh, simplifying what we already know look if q is equal to v then limit of q with v approaching n is equal to n. Again, this is a linear function, right? So all we've got to do is to substitute n uh, for v. Okay, but uh, then we can make this case a little bit more complex. What if we've got q equals v to the power of k, where k is some constant? But it can, of course, be any power, any real power we want. Okay, so, again, nothing complicated here because limit with v approaching n out of q is, as you might guess, n to the power of k. In other words, if we, for example, okay, let, let's use an example. Look, if, we, if our q is equal to uh, v to the power of 3, then limit with v approaching n out of q is uh, 
out of, uh, uh, let's just say, with V approaching, uh, let's just say 2, is 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. Okay, so, now that we have dealt with this simple things, now let's move to the theorems involving uh, more than one function, actually, uh, uh, actually we should say, but look, I'm gonna just write theorems involving two functions. But I hope once you see how it works for two functions, you, you will be able to easily extrapolate this for as many functions as you want. So, now let's go to theorem number four, which is called uh, some, uh, some difference theorem. Okay, and again, here we have a case that if we have limit with v approaching n out of q1 times q2, then I hope you can even guess this, it, it is equal to limit with v approaching n out of q1 times limit with v approaching n out of Q2, which is equal to L1 times L2. So as you see, again, limit, uh, limit of the product is product of two limits. But look, as I said before, this could be easily extended to an indefinite num number of cases. Because look, we can always treat Q1 
plus q2 as one function, for example, and add it to it another function, q3. So look, in this case, we would say we can look just like we could do here. Uh, in both cases, so we can write that limit with v approaching n out of q1 plus minus q2 plus minus until qn is equal to l1, where l1 is the limit of q1 plus minus l2 plus minus until ln. And, and the same would be with this. If we had limits with v approaching uh, n of q1 times q2 times q n is equal to l1 times l2 times ln. Because remember that any number of these functions can be treated as a function. So this property transcends uh, to any uh, number of uh, uh, any number of functions. Okay. So now we go to theorem number six. So this will be quotient limit theorem. And now we also can probably guess how it's going to work. So now look, limit of a quotient of two functions is of course equal uh, to a quotient two limits. But of course, in this case, we need to make a concession. The concession is that limits with v approaching n out of q2 equal to l2 must be different than zero because we cannot divide by zero. Okay, maybe let's illustrate this one with an example. Although I, I assume that this, this this is not very complicated. So, okay, so if I have a limit with v approaching zero out, uh, out of uh, v plus one over v plus two, look in this case. In this case, we don't know yet appropriate theorem to deal with this. Have we dealt with this function before? Look, it's not a linear function. This is not a. Uh, there is not a, 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 a not a, a power function. So technically, we don't know how to deal with this. So what we should do here is to evaluate each limit separately. Here we get that this is just one and limit with v approaching zero out of v plus two is just two, right? So knowing this, we can just substitute and we get and we get that the limit is equal to one over two. Okay, and now that we have dealt with so many simple theorems, maybe it is right about time to get to some more complex functions. Okay, so now let's move to the polynomial function. Okay, so what is the limit of polynomial function? function of v 
can be written in the following form, right? A0 plus A1 to the power V uh, to times V to the power of 1 plus A2 times V to the power of 2 plus A3 times V to the power of 3 and we will go on like this until we arrive at the last component, component AN times uh, V to the power of N. Okay, so how to calculate a limit of such function? Look, we can do it uh, by using the theorems we already know. So let's start with the limit. Oh, so we've got with V approaching N out of Q. And now, look, based on the sum theorem, uh, sum difference theorem, we know that I can evaluate each of these limits separately. So I would have here limit with V approaching N out of A0 plus limit with V approaching N out of A1 V plus Okay, I'm going to skip this one because this is going to be very repetitive. A limit with v approaching n out of a to v squared. And plus, we have the last component would be limit with v approaching n out of a n v n. Okay, and look, let's just look what we've got here. Now, here, we've just got a limit of a constant, right? Because a0 is the parameter in this function. So, it's going to be equal to a0. Now, over here, we've got a limit of a product, right? So, it could be rewritten into limit with v approaching n out of a1 and limit limit times, of course, limit with v approaching n out of v. Okay, but look, over here, again, this is just the limit of a parameter, limit of a constant, so this is going to be equal to a1 and limit with v approaching n out of v, this is a limit of a, a linear function, we just need to substitute n. And look, we can extend exactly the same reasoning to every component. This could be rewritten as a limit of v to the, uh, uh, as a limit with v approaching n out of a2, times limit with v approaching n out of v4. So, what would we get over here? Out of this one, we would get a2, which is the limit of the constant, times v to the uh, limit of, of v to the power of 2, so n to the power of 2. And by the same reasoning, the last component would be equal to a n times n to the power of n. So this is how we obtain our final result in here, that limit of the, uh, of the polynomial function given over here would be equal to a0 plus a1 times n plus a2 times n squared plus a3 times n cubed plus until a n n to the power of n. Okay, so look, uh, again we've stumbled on a very pleasant result. Why pleasant? Because look, if I want to calculate a limit of polynomial function, all I need to do is to substitute the value that I'm interested in, right? V, uh, as V approaches N, 
If n is 3, I just replace every n with 3. If a, uh, n is 0, I replace every n with 0. That's it. Okay, so this actually brings us to another thing. Because, look, what we observe this far is that certain functions are actually uh, are, are actually uh, limits of certain functions are really easy to calculate. What do I mean by that? Look, if we have, we stumble first on the linear function, when we have a linear function, if we want to calculate the limit at some n, all we've got to do is to substitute this number into the function. And let's see how linear function look like. Right? So let's just say that a is positive. So oh, here we have b. And look, this function is continuous. Well, I already skipped <laughs> skipped a little bit. Yeah, but look, this function is constituted by, by a line. Look, I can draw this entire function by not picking up my, uh, my piece of joke uh, from the blackboard. And but look, if I would like to draw the function quadratic function, a uh, v squared plus uh, b v plus c, the graph for this function is a parabola, right? Again, we know that cubic, uh, uh, I'm sorry, quadratic function is a special case of polynomial function that is also continuous. And look, I can easily draw this function without picking up my piece of joke from the like. And look, in general, polynomial function, so function of in the form a0 plus a1b plus a2v squared plus a3v cubed plus until a n v n. Well, as I mentioned in one of our previous videos, function like this looks like a wave. Right, it has full of it is full of uh, valleys like this and hills. So, example of a function like this would be now. Look again, as you might might have noticed, I've drawn this function quite easily without. Picking up my pair. Now, the thing is that each function that with which we can do something like this, with one exemption that it needs to be needs to be happening in the domain, is called a continuous function. Look, continuous function simply means it doesn't have any breaks. Like it's not having any holes in it or we do not have a situation where right up until here it looks like this but from this point it starts going like this look this is a re legit function right we can have a function like this but this is no longer a continuous function because look i can't draw this function without taking my hand up Okay, so let's now consider for a second continuity of the function. <coughs> so
with continuity. Okay. So, theorem number one goes like this. Uh, so let's call it continuity the theorems. Okay, so theorem number one is that all polynomial functions functions are all continuous. Okay, so this is telling us something. Now, the main theorem is theorem number two, which we usually even call the continuity theorem. is continuous in the domain. Okay, look. I want to notice one thing, one difference between these two theorems. Look, in here I didn't write in the domain. Because look, poly no, domain uh, 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 domain of the polynomial function is generally uh, real numbers. We can restrict it, but still, this function uh, is going to. Uh, but 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 still, the principle is that this function is going to be continuous. If we restrict the domain of polynomial function, we will have to add this. But look, polynomial function category is a very broad category. It contains constant function, linear function, quadratic function, cubic function, and every more complex functions with more and more uh, integer powers, right? Well, uh, natural, whole powers, yeah, whole powers. Uh, we are not taking into consideration here negative powers, right? And we get that if I'm going to take sum, difference, product, or quotient uh, of any number of these functions, I will also get a continuous function. Okay, and from this follows theorem number three that rational functions. are continuous in the domain. What were rational functions? Remember, rational function is a function that we have obtained by multi uh, 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 by division of two polynomials. So if I have a0 plus a1 v plus a2 v squared plus until a uh, a2 I'm sorry a n v n and if 
I divide it by B0 plus B1 V plus B2 V2 plus A, A B M V M because remember those two don't need to be the same and of course they can have different components within some of them might be missing because some of them B2s or A of B's or A's can be equal to zero all those functions are continuous in the domain because remember because we are dividing here we need to exclude every possibility of the uh, function in the denominator being equal to zero look within this function we can have a, we have a possibility of m zero places so we need to exclude those but look this should also point you to another thing that some difference in product of any finite number of polynomial functions is continuous. Not only in the domain, everywhere. Assuming that, of course, the domain wasn't restricted to beginners. Okay, and look, uh, I don't think this requires fur <coughs> further examples, but let me just give you one. So look, we, let's just say that we've got a function 4v squared over v squared plus 1. Uh, uh, v squared minus 1. Oh, that's going to be nice. Stay here. Okay. Now look, what is, like, we can right away see that on the top we've got polynomial function which is very simple right just one component and the same in the body now is this function continuous well it is we can easily see that but first we should notice that this component can be equal to zero so we need to eliminate the possibility because this is equal to v minus one times v plus 1 right away we see that out of the domain we need to exclude two points negative 1 and 1 those two points are out now limit of this function with v approaching n is simply equal to 4n squared over n squared minus 1 and because this limit is in fact uh, uh, is in fact equal to the value of the function yeah this is continuous okay look we've learned this far a lot about limits and about continuity but look our primary goal in this, in this part of the class, so in, the, in calculus, was to calculate the derivative. And we're gonna go back to, the, to this topic that we kind of abandoned for a while uh, in the next video. But look, we needed to go through all of this for, my, for a couple of reasons. One of them is that we need to use limit theorems when we're gonna be finding the uh, rules for differentiation. The second one is that actual continuity is very important before we can differentiate the function. Actually, we cannot come a, we cannot differentiate the function unless uh, unless it uh, continues. And as and actually. As I, I'm going to demonstrate to you uh, in the next video, this is actually not enough. We need a little bit more. We will, this is why in the next video, we will consider the difference between continuity of a function and differentiability of the function. Differentiability means the ability to calculate a derivative. Okay, see you in the next video.